All right, so it's May 2nd. We're pulling the uh, the yellow Moto 4 out of rotation for a little while so I can get a little, little work done. A couple of things. We put a new battery on it. And even with that new battery, we now get the indicator lights neutral, um, reverse to light up, um, but it won't start. You press the button and it's not quite a solenoid click, but uh, there's something going on. I think there might be a short in the wiring somewhere. The other thing we want to do is we went riding a few weekends back, our first ride of the year, and there was two or three inches of snow on the ground. And without any fenders or fairings, this just threw wet snow all over you. You know, Blaster has some fairings on it, like race fairings throws up. This has none. And because there were no fairings on here, my sister-in-law, Cindy, I mean, is, she was riding like a frozen popsicle. It, it was cold. Yeah, you and I are getting smoked. Your boot is full of snow. Oh yeah. So we do have the fairings for this. I haven't had them on in years. They're still the original uh, Moto 4 Blue. So we're gonna pull those out. We're gonna clean them up. The reason they weren't on here is the fairing stay. The fairing stay bolts up underneath the front in here. The fairing stay on these old Moto 4s tends to snap, and when they snap, the plastics just hang down, rub on the tires. So. I got some bar stock, put it inside the hollow tubing for that fairing stay, which I'll show you, welded that up. So we have a fairing stay, we now have the plastics, we're gonna clean them up, um, paint them yellow. One side's cracked off, so you can't mount it up front here, so I'm probably gonna cut them down to match. And this front luggage rack has always looked like this. Uh, when I got it, it was all smashed up from an accident. And I might see if I can find this uh, on eBay somewhere so we can get you know, one that's not as beat up, so we can give this thing a, a little bit of love. Oh, so I just winded myself trying to pull start it a little bit. But here's the symptom. We have a new battery, charge battery. Switch is on, key is on, indicator lights, hit the start button. Did you hear that? There we go. Now it's sounding like a dead battery. A moment before it sounded like it was trying to turn the starter but it couldn't. We're gonna get it on a good trickle charge overnight. We'll look at the symptoms again, then we'll start going from there. <sighs> oh. Once it starts, it uh, idles really nice. Pretty sure though, if I do a leak down test or compression test, the original head that's on there. Pretty sure it's starting to get a little sloppy. Oh, my shed became a mess real quick after that last build. Uh, we do also have a battery. It's a 14 amp hour battery. And we purchased it new about two years ago and really didn't get a lot of use out of it. Suspicion is it may be fine, just always getting kind of a vampire drain from that yellow Moto 4. So we're going to uh, put it on a charger, find out if it's okay or if it needs to be recycled. All right, we've got it on our little Nico Genius. We're going to let this charge for a while. We may take it back through the, uh, the repair, the recondition mode down here, see what happens. Apologies for all the mess. We are getting a, a beehive going this year. Unfortunately, the queen uh, didn't make it in transport. So we gotta get our queen into the hive we're setting up. This is what we have for fairing. And we have the original Moto 4 rubbers to go around the side. What you're looking at here is some cleanup work done with a heat gun. And if you're looking close, it does an all right job. It takes this sun kind of, I don't know what to call this, but uh, it almost just kind of flakes off when it starts to really degrade. You can see a lot more of the sun damage here and more so on this side. 
Really got to hit this with some sandpaper to buff it up. That's SC1 just hitting this grade, won't do anything. SC1 over here, after you've hit it with a heat gun, cleans it up pretty well. This side is snapped off, there's nothing to mount with, you know, to the tabs on, again, this bent up frame here. I'm expecting what I'm going to do is cut this side to match, cut the rubber back, put another mounting screw right in here to keep it tight, and clean up this one, and we'll ultimately clean this up, paint it to match the yellow something of that nature this is the fairing stay and what would happen is often they would snap one side one side or the other of the, the frame mounts here in this case I actually was able to take a you know kind of a piece from a disposable toolkit like a uh, Oh, what do you want to call it? But it's like the end of a screwdriver. <laughs> Fit it down in the middle here, clean this up on the grinder, hit it with the welder. As this will mount uh, basically like so down in there to keep the fairing from collapsing in. So now that I've welded that, we can put this back on. And we'll get those plastics cleaned up, tied up, the rubber mounted, which will come back down. So even if you'd only had here, your boots would still be covered in mud. But once it covers back down, it should be a whole lot uh, nicer to ride in the sloppy stuff. All right, today I'm going to do a, a real quick job on the brakes on the back of this uh, 1986 YFM 200 DX Moto 4. On the back of these ATVs, it's just a, uh, a single pot under here, cable pull, no hydraulics. So I've popped off the, the, rear, the rear wheel here, three bolts, three 14 millimeter bolts, washers, locking washers. And I'm gonna take this apart to the extent that I can get this protective cover off. I think it's one, two, I think three Phillips. And I'll have to take this uh, armature off here. So I'll remove the two cables holding it and ultimately this bolt that um, sets the distance for where uh, the cable pulls engage with the, the pot, the caliper in there. And I'll unhook the spring and then we should be able to see what this looks like inside and this will have to be dealt with too. The uh, foot brake is about to pop out and you wouldn't have any brakes there either. This I'm going to want to pack with grease. You can see in here there's a bit of a kind of like a worm gear really. There we go. This should be all packed with grease so that things flow well. And then you've got this rubber bearing or rubber seal. And this guy you'll want to clean up, lube up. This foot is what pushes the caliper. And there's the caliper. Let's take this shield off. So in this case, I've got to get this shield off to be able to get at the two pots to replace them. But my uh, drive shaft protection here is so bent I can't get it off. So I'm going to loosen these two bolts so I can bend this down.
now we can get in here, see our rotor, all the crud that was being held on. Look at that, that pot's actually not super warm, really. So this whole caliper's got a slide. These two have got to be loosened up. All right, with these two 14 millimeter nuts off, we can slide the whole rotor caliper out off the splines. There we go. There we go. Now we have full access to work on the brakes. One of these, you'll just drop in. So one sits on the inside piece here, just drop in. The other one sits like that. So now, I gotta make a decision here. I am not so sure I wanna keep this guard on here. It gets so packed with debris and mud and is a real pain. Challenge is, if I do take the whole guard off, the return spring mounts to it. Without this, I'll have nowhere, nothing protruding to put a return spring on. And that spring pulls this aperture, this, this guy here, down. So, there's really nowhere good. So, it's looks like it's all going back on. All right, so this worm gear, all this here that ultimately pushes and retracts on that pot. This is grease that I use for packing uh, trailer bearings. And we're just gonna use this today. I don't wanna go too much because when I put the bolt back in there, I don't want to push grease necessarily all out in and around here. I just want to make sure that this is going to get as lubed as is reasonable. With that, I'm going to set this aside because I want to clean up and paint a few of these guys so they are cleaned up again. Just some Rust-Oleum semi-gloss protective. All right, I'm going to give things a little bit to dry and set up, maybe another coat. And I did do a little bit of touch-up while it was on the bike on the cover here with the high gloss, kind of covering some of the uh, some of the rust. So I got to let that set up and then uh, probably do a little touch-up again. I got a little bit of a dribble there. And then, uh, then we'll put this back together. All right, everything's dried out. Looks good enough for what we're going to do. Here are the new pads. I'll show you something here. So here's the pads I just took out. Here's the new ones. Really not an awful lot of wear, but we're in here, we're gonna do it. We want these pads to be nice and tight. So now, so now reversing the process, drop one in just like that, slide my cover out of the way, and get this one onto the rotor. I got a little bit of paint on that rotor. Hopefully that's not gonna be a big deal. And then once it's sitting on that rotor, get it up on the splines, line up the screw holes, Now I've got the pot on the other side of the caliper here. Rotor's back on the splines. These screws are back through. Put those screws back in, or those nuts back on, sorry. Uh, those are on. You might notice something else here that this protection for my drive shaft, everything, uh, kind of cracked up here. So I'm gonna have to pay attention to that. <clears throat> That's something I may end up taking off and welding. Uh, not today, but that could be something to get done. Set my other pot down in there. And with that, we can get our 
protective cover back on. And frankly, we can even screw this one right back together now. Now back to some of our key components here. This guy sits over. When we had taken this apart before, one of those nuts was loose. Now, paying attention, these washers fit over the end here. They allow me to stretch this cable out that way. There's a hole in one side which goes to the back for the spring connection. And we have the long bolt here which reaches all the way through to the back of the pot we just put in. these and in this case might not even need them on this one there's plenty of spring left here to set the distance this one here for the foot brake this cable is stretched so this is me trying to stretch it out because if you look on this side this spring is really compacted and this one would seem to have an opportunity for some play I feel that drag more drag, really too tight. Ugh. Right there. That's where I'm gonna leave it set up. And if I do this one, I feel the drag. I'm gonna leave them there. All right, so that's it. So. I'll do another video where I'll do the, the front brakes. They're different. They're, uh, they're drums versus the, the single pot cable pull. Uh, we're building this one up. We're touching the brakes. My nephew, um, he's about 13 now. He's a very tall 13 year old. So candidly, he's, he's still young for a machine like this. Not because this has too much power, but there's a lot of weight here and a lot of ATV riders being able to shift your weight. Uh, but there is enough power to pin it. And without some experience, you could get in trouble. Uh, he's been riding for a couple of years, smaller things, Tau Tau's, uh, Honda 125cc dirt bike. So he has some base experience. But one of the big differences is the Tau Tau's have uh, hydraulic brakes in the rear. Uh, but hydraulic brakes tend to just work. <laughs> Cable pull, you always adjust them a little bit, and uh, I'd hate for somebody to get surprised. So uh, I'll put a link uh, to the brakes. Uh, down in the description something to pay attention to the brakes for you can get a whole kit front and rears for this the yfm 200 specifically yfm 200 dx um, anywhere from about 15 bucks to 30 bucks just watch out if you're going for like the 15 dollars the rock bottom ones um, i've had some interesting experiences so looking here if it's be careful getting some of the real cheap ones this one looks great for pads to put on the front you know these came with the ones i just put on for the rear there's a set you know there's one ta-da somebody was sleeping at quality control there is no pad on there at all so you know you, be careful what you're shopping for getting the uh the rock bottom price ones but 15 to 30 bucks should be able to get you a whole set i do also have a performance set here a little bit harder to find, but what I like about these when I get to the front brakes is when I get dirt and grime and everything, these channels push all that mud and slime right out the edge. 
instead of just compacting it under here. So, uh, but that's enough. I'm gonna get that rear wheel on and we've got some other things to do. Uh, more things coming on this old Moto 4, getting this one tuned up, uh, fairings, touch up some of the paint. And uh, it's not charging the battery. Pretty sure it's the regulator. Uh, I'll post another video on this if I'm successful, but I believe that I can convert a regulator for a like a, uh, a GY6, you know, 125, 150, 200 cc type ATV scooter. The reason I want to do that is what's in these is a single phase um, four wire 12 volt regulator. Finding it for the Moto 4 is a real pain. I find them OEM for anywhere from 90 to 120 bucks. Uh, but if I can be successful splicing in a harness, um, I can do it for 15 bucks on a rock bottom or anywhere between that. So might be a lower cost way to take care of a regulator if you need that too. But I got to study that. And if I'm successful, I'll put a video up on that one.